And she kept catching mistakes that she would bring up to the editor that they finally started putting her into copy editing. And so then that was how she got into journalism. Karen Bauer spells her name with a lowercase k, and that's because she stands out amongst the rest. She began her journey in communications in the newsroom at a local newspaper. She decided her calling was journalism and got an education in the communications field. She eventually wound up at Bismarck State College as a student, and then she found her way to the other side of the desk. Karen started teaching in 2000 at BSC and has made many strong connections within the campus community ever since. I met Karen when our offices were in Schaefer Hall and they were across the hall from each other. When Kim started teaching at BSC in 2011, she noticed that Karen was a private person, which is why I'm sure she'll love this documentary. She often would keep the door to the adjoining hallway shut. However, Kim and Karen found a common love of journalism. My mother has a background in journalism and so we, we started visiting about some of that and had in common things like waxing and um, using the exacto knife to place the pages and all that kind of stuff. And so we started talking and I knew that we were friends when she opened her doorway to the hallway. After the doorway to their friendship opened up, they found themselves always doing something fun with one another. From trips to New York City to laughs had over dinner at the Toasted Frog, they always enjoy being around each other. Kim says that their friendship is so special that they could be doing nothing at all and she would still enjoy that time spent with her best friend. Their friendship is so strong and true, but Miss Karen's biggest impact at BSC has been on the students. You can't really describe it because it's more of, a, of, a, of an aura than it is an actual action. But she just, and she cares, legitimately cares so much uh, that it, it's impossible for that not to bleed through to students, I think. I think Karen is an important professor because she cares so much about the students as people. But she wants each person to succeed, and I think that's what separates her, is, is her um, investment in students. I've learned a lot from Karen, and she takes it, such a hands-off approach. You don't realize how much you learn from her. You kind of realize it when you leave. Aside from teaching lessons in the classroom, Karen is also the advisor for the campus newspaper, The Mystician. And because she believes and trusts in her students, she has been able to help them through not only their college career, but their lifelong careers as well. Early on, I really was drawn to her and, um, and really liked her as a professor, but then working with her as the editor, you know, I just always had support from her, whether it be for the newspaper, for my classes, or for my life. And so she was more than just a professor or a newspaper advisor. She was really kind of a life mentor and friend, and now is a friend, so. She was always there when I needed her, but I didn't want to disappoint Karen. Like, she believed in me, and I wasn't about to disappoint her. Both Hunter and Katie were editors of The Mystician and received some backlash from the campus community for things published in the newspaper. She took a lot of heat from certain people who ran this college at the time because they were trying to censor this. And she wouldn't back down. You know, there's just always like issues, or we published an F-bomb and an opinion piece, actually multiple F-bombs that were quotes and an opinion piece, and got a lot of backlash from that. Although Karen was a leader to them, and as the General Colin Powell said, great leaders are almost always great simplifiers who can cut through argument, debate, and doubt to offer solution everybody can understand. A lot of leaders back down. Karen's a leader who wouldn't back down. And Karen always had our backs, but also like made us take the responsibility for it. So when BSC communications people came to her and said, why was this published? Karen said, why don't you come talk to my editor and the writer about it? And you know, and 
taught us how to have those conversations and kind of explain ourselves, but also not that we're in trouble in a way that we're saying, this is why we did it and, you know, take responsibility, but also have confidence in our decisions. Through these tough situations on campus, Karen taught her students lessons that will last a lifetime. She encouraged us all to find our voices and to go out on campus and do the interviews and ruffle feathers if we needed to and, you know, force conversations and hold people accountable. And I think at the age I was, I was at that time, I really needed someone to push me to take my voice and use it. And that's what she did with a lot of us. And so I think that's another good quality that she has is she makes us um, do things that are maybe scary, but they then instill confidence in us and experience and help us in the long term. She gave me the superpower and now I have 80 kids in a school who I can share that superpower with. She's irreplaceable. There's just no way that you can that you can sum it up. I mean, she's she's just she's brave and she's tough and she's a word geek and she's thoughtful and not just thoughtful like nice to other people, thoughtful like think things through methodical. Um, she's a caretaker. You know, I just really value having her in my life. Past the education, past BSC, just having her as a friend now. She's just a good person and she cares and she's kind and I mean what more could you ask for in a friend and so because I valued her so much in my education and through my journey leading to my career it just makes sense to have her in my personal life. It's all everything in my life today is because of Karen and that's why I'm about to cry. That, that's why she that's why I dedicated my book to her. I wouldn't have a book without Karen. I wouldn't have be an English teacher without Karen. If it wasn't for Karen, <laughs> I wouldn't have any of the things I have right now. And I can't believe I'm crying. Karen, I don't cry, Karen. <laughs> and I'm crying and I'm looking at the camera. I'm not supposed to do, but okay. she is the reason I am who I am today. I don't even know. To say she's my friend is the wrong word. She's more like a sister. Oh, I was gonna make it through. I'm gonna do it. My life is infinitely richer. I have to hurt in it. Thank you.